Hi there. Last weekend I um, went to a record fair in Holland, in the center of Holland, in a town called Utrecht. And uh, that is a record fair that basically gets named the biggest record fair in Europe. Maybe even the biggest record fair in the world. They're not quite sure about the last part but they're 100% positive that they're the biggest in mainland Europe or in Europe overall. And it's quite possibly that that's true because it's, it's insanely big. It's so much um, music stuff there. Um, I, I wanted to shoot some footage. I didn't. But then again, I wouldn't have been able to because it was really crowded and it was uh, was filled with people. So the whole uh, economic crisis thing, I didn't see it there. I honestly God did not see an economic crisis there. There were people spending lots and lots of money, like genuinely a lots and lots of money. Um, I, I'll try, uh, next April there's another fair, I'll, I'll try to do some footage there so you can kind of see how big it is and how cool it is. Because it is, it is really cool. Um, there's people from all over the world selling stuff. Uh, predominantly Germany, Scandinavia, um, former Eastern Bloc, so Hungary, uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, or the Czech Republic, sorry. Uh, there are a lot of people from there. From the UK, there's a lot of people. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of French and Spanish um, sellers could be wrong. There was one guy from Japan, he's always there. Uh, I think someone from South Africa. Yeah, there's, it's from all over the world. They're, they're all there selling their, their wares, so that's really cool. I picked up 15 records, uh, which is a little less than I normally pick up, but then again the prices were a little higher than I normally pay for, so yeah, there's some records that I really, really wanted. First off, um, I know it's not a request, I know that, but I kind of talked with Cool Ranch Dressing about uh, broadcasts Ha Ha Sound, and I asked them, what does the vinyl release look like, because the CD release is pretty damn cool. And uh, this is a CD release. Anyway, the vinyl release apparently is not that special, but this is a little booklet that you um, can not really read because there's nothing to read in there but it's just great artwork great looking set and uh, yeah, it's the CD in the back great music again if you don't know broadcast pick it up this is not what I picked up at Reddit by the way this is what I picked up starting off with orange juice uh, you Can't Hide Your Love Forever. This is the German pressing on Polydor. And, oh, if you don't know Orange Juice, they're a... Um, uh, they, I don't know what they are. <laughs> they're a, a band originally on the postcard label, which is some kind of indie slash post-punk label, but to categorize this band as post-punk would be a little weird because they just sound more uh, indie pop to me. But then again, they predate the whole indie pop thing, so uh, could be. Anyway, it's great, great stuff. And uh, yeah, this is just killer stuff. I love it. I uh, also picked up the Monochron set, Eligible Bachelors, uh, which is on Cherry Red Records. This is, I believe, the third album by uh, the Monochron set. and. To be quite honest, uh, I'll probably keep it at this. I, I might pick up more monochrome set if I find it really, really affordable. Because uh, this is, I think, the last good album that they did. Starting off with the the Jet Set Yanta, uh, Junta or whatever, that is amazing. You know, it's a great, great album. Uh, quirky, funny, uh, and cool sounding actually. Their, their debut album is by far the best, but if you do manage to see this and it's affordable, pick it up. This is Jim O'Rourke, uh, Eureka. 
I don't know. Is it, uh, how many uh, albums in this is in this uh, discography? But this is from 1999. It's on Drag City. It's, so it's an original copy. I believe the uh, European release was on Domino, but I could be wrong. It's got a, a it's, well weird cover, <laughs> but it's great, great music. It's beautiful music, actually. And uh, yeah, it's it's something I didn't expect from this guy. It's kind of weird because I know he did a lot of experimental stuff, and he worked with Sonic Youth on one or two LPs. Uh, I know that stuff, kind of, so I was expecting a lot more experimental styled music, but it's really beautiful. Beautiful pop with uh, strings and uh, horns, and it's, it's just beautiful. Great stuff. Next up, I'm really, really happy with this album. This is the beat happening with Dreamy. This is not an original copy. Well, it is an original copy, but not... Uh, an American original copy, which is on K. This is the German release, which is on Sup Up. And, um, I mean, it's a great, great album. I really, really love it. Um, it just makes me want to pick up more by this band. But it's pretty, pretty expensive, uh, picking up their stuff. They're, they're not a, an easy-to-find band, so... I just have to have this. This is the first time I, I have an actual copy of a Beat Happening album in my hand. i uh, never seen any before, and I do hope to see more afterwards, but this is really, really beautiful music. I love it. Some noise rock. This is uh, Truman's Water. If you don't know Truman's Water, you know, ch check him out. Check this album out, because this is their, you know, one of the greatest albums. It's got a weird ass title. It's called uh, Spasm Smash XXO XOXOX X, and Ass. It's a double album on Elemental Records, which is a UK label. And it's got really cool, like, labels. I really, really dig that. Um, and it's, it's really good noise rock so if you really are into noise and noise rock this is a band you should check out and uh yeah they are being compared um i don't hear it but like the indie rock or the noise rock version of uh captain beefheart's trout mask replica that's what people are saying about them um which is a big big statement which I don't agree with either, but it is a real, really good album. Pick it up. Pick it up if you want to, of course. <laughs> this is Girls Against Boys. Uh, didn't have anything by this band ever, so uh, when I saw this, I just grabbed it. It was pretty, pretty affordable. It's on Touch and Go. This is the UK version, limited edition, three thousand copies, and it is limited because it has certain bonus things in the packaging. Let's see. First up, it's got a bumper sticker, which is kind of cool. It's got the title of one of their songs, Superfire, and it's got a poster, which is nothing special, but you know, it's cool. That's what makes it limited. Otherwise, it is just the same album. Probably the same cover. It's not colored vinyl either. You know, but this was pretty decently decently priced, so I picked it up. This was a lot more expensive and um, a lot more rare, actually. This is a awesome EP. It's a four-track EP by Liquid Liquid. Uh, again on 99 Records, which is one of the coolest labels ever. Um, Liquid Liquid is a funk, uh, funk slash punk band from New York. Um, their records are produced by Ed Bauman, who was the owner of 99 Records, who probably owned 
far as I know, owned a record store back in New York City in the day. And this is just friggin' awesome. Um, it's called Optimo, this EP. And it features the song Cavern, which was sampled by Grandmaster Flash in the Furious Five. But if you do find this, be prepared to fork out a lot of money, because this is really rare stuff. This one was pretty affordable, uh, surprisingly, but I've seen records, EPs by this band go for up to 60 euros, which is insane, which I don't really want to pay for, but this was a lot less than that, but be prepared to fork out crazy money for this band, because it's really rare stuff and it's really worth it. The only non-post-punk, noise-rock, alternative-sounding stuff that I picked up at the fair was Earth and Fire's Atlantis. This is their third album, and this is awesome Dutch prog. Um, yeah, this is just amazing. This is a killer band. This is one of the three best prog bands from Holland. Uh, this band... Alquin and uh, Focus, obviously, but Focus being my least favorite of the three, this is just killer. Um, comes with the original inner insert, and it's on Polydor Records. Uh, yeah, this is if you love Prague, this is killer stuff, really, really good stuff. So that's Earth and Fire. Some more Dutch stuff. Kim. This is the debut album from 1984. This is the band. They're from Rotterdam and they make sort of a post-punk styled music that is heavy on the industrial side. It's, it's lots of metal sounding drums got synth sounds, it got, it's got a saxophone player doing, you know, a little freestyled um, saxophone stuff. Uh, I keep saying stuff a lot. Anyway. Um, this predates techno, electronic body music uh, of the late 80s, and it's just a, a repetitive beating. Um, like mechanical sound that you hear and the lyrics, there's not real, real lyrics, it's basically repeating um, just sentences and it just works so well. This is a really really good album. They did two more after this uh, and it's on the uh, Amsterdam Torso label. Torso. Um, this is the probably later label that they had, Torso great, great um, uh, label. And this is probably a reissue because the album, original album is from 1984 and this is from 1987, this release. So, uh, that's Keem. Next up is um, probably my third most expensive record that I picked up, but I just had to have it. Um, the original copy of this Heat's debut album from 1978. Um, I believe this is a sticker from a German store, so they imported this, but it is an original on piano records, so it's, it's not a German copy. Uh, it's killer. Oh my god, this is just amazing. Uh, I did a post-punk pearls on their second album, The Seed. This it's not better, but it comes so close to that album. It's a lot more noisier, a lot more raw than The Seed, but it is killer. This is just a monster, monster post-punk album. And it's, it's so... M it's near perfect, near perfect. Uh, again, not an easy album to find, and not a cheap album to find, but it's well worth it, so think about it. I don't know if this has been reissued, if it has, you know, try to either find the reissue, which is, I guess, also crazily priced, but, you know, 
It's a great album. This is not an original. I probably wouldn't be able to afford an original. It goes on Discogs for from I guess eighty dollars to about three hundred slash four hundred dollars. Uh, that original is on 99 records. That kind of shows how insanely rare that label is and how, it, how much sought after the 99 records label is. But this is a reissue from 2010 on Fortissimo records. It's still available and it's about, I guess, 20, 25 euros. Same price also in dollars, I guess. It's a great sounding remastered 180 gram version on white vinyl of Glenn Branca's Ascension. Didn't mention the name yet. There you have it. This is what originally would be the back uh, cover. Um, but they have added new artwork on the re release. Um, it's noise rock, kind of mixed with sort of a post-punk post punk sound and a post-rock vibe before it was even post-rock. Um, it's also got, you know, avant-garde classical edges and it's just noisy and it's beautiful noise. It's not noise that you want to cover your ears with. This is noise you want to really delve into because there's layer upon layer of just noisy guitars that that is just awesome. Um, on this album, you also find this is original, originally from 1981. You'll find probably one of the first recordings, maybe I don't know. Maybe he was in other bands before, but I don't know. Lee Ronaldo of Sonic Youth on here, and it's it's just this is killer. If you don't have this yet, like I said, it's been reissued on Fortissimo Records in the UK. Try to get a copy if you don't have it yet and you really want this, it's on your wish list. Get it now, because who knows how long this will stay in print. It's just an awesome, awesome release. Some more Dutch post-punk. This is the Mini Pops. Uh, the album is called Post Restante. Um, this is... It, I like it, but it's not that mind-blowing. Um, I expected it to be a lot more post-punk, and this is more, I don't know, experimental, I guess, but in a weird way. Uh, it's a piece of music that is made for a Dutch theater company, for a, a production they did, uh, probably also called Posterestante, but I don't know. It is, uh, it is good. There's a couple of songs on there that are just amazing, but overall it has that silent, uh, very minimalistic sound with female vocals, with male vocals. And it's a mixture of, of Dutch language and English language, and it's kind of, I, I do like it a lot, but it's, it's not quite what I expected it to be. It's on the Plurex label. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. If you uh, are in the UK, by the way, uh, right now, and uh, you want to see this band live, they're performing, I guess, early next year, um, together with a, another Dutch post-rock, post-punk band called um, Rats on Rats. That's a recent band. They're really good. Uh, I, I'll post the... Uh, uh, the, the tour dates down there because uh, they, they only do about five shows. So if you're if they're playing in a town near you and you really want to see this band, uh, I'll give the information down there. Anyway, uh, it's good, but I'm really more interested in their other stuff. So that's the mini pops. The next three are monster albums, um, just killer, killer stuff, and I'm so so happy with this, uh, finding these three records for prices that I think are, are really, really decent. <coughs> First um, band, Cool Ranch Dressing, did a uh, whole video on them, maybe a, a double video, I don't quite remember, but they did a 
like a discography uh, video on this band. Uh, Infinite Groove did the same thing. And it's Swans with Cop. Um, it's got the original insert. It's on the K422 label, which I think is Michael Gira's own label. This is from the early 80s, uh, 1980. I think 1983, but I could be wrong. 1984. Uh, and this is nasty sounding noise rock, doomy kind of dark stuff. Just dark, morbid, scary, um, but beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I played this to a friend of mine, and he has some Swans stuff, and he always thought they were more quiet sounding and I played this and he was like what the hell is this and I'm like it's the swans this is what they normally sound like and he was like wow um, just good stuff really 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 happy that I have this last two albums are um, just I uh, wow I'm so happy I have these this is Melvin's prick uh, not the original uh, U.S. release. This is a, a German release on the same label that uh, I mean, Sub Pop Germany and Amphetamine Reptile Germany. They were the same company, um, and this is on the same label. And uh, it's just, you know, this is just awesome. Uh, I've not really delved into these in, in this album, so I don't know if this is the more uh, experimental sounding one, but it's killer. It's Melvin's. It's an original copy. Paid some good money for this. As did I pay good money for this copy of Honky, which is on the same German Amphetamine Reptile label, and I think this one is the more like Doom and Sludge version, just heavy sounding album. I need to get this clean because it's it's not in the greatest shape. I have to say that, which is a shame because of the money I paid for it, but I've never ever seen phys uh, physical copies of this, so I had to have it. It does play good, but I need to clean it. So that's my uh, final finds update for the record fair in Utrecht. Um, I am going to be uh, doing more final updates in December, probably one, maybe maybe two small updates. But it's not going to be a lot of new stuff. It's basically going to be uh, goodwill finds, and you know, I'll I'll try to. As long as I can do it without getting in, in the way of work, I, I'll end up doing it. But it's going to be a lot less. Uh, but you know, I'm still hoping to do some videos. Uh, what more? Um, that's about it, I guess. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. A lot of people have subscribed lately. Um, If you like what I'm doing, continue and subscribe. Leave comments, you know, and uh, be cool. Peace.